Hi, hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Grade Up. Welcome to the session Startup Series for 2021 aspirants. This is Satya, senior faculty from Computer Science, waiting for you all to join the session. So, students, please join the session quickly and mark your presence. I'll be waiting for you for a few minutes. So we are discussing about operating systems in Git perspective. We have discussed already about deadlocks and then we have discussed about this critical section problem along with the race condition and then solutions to critical section problem. And in the last class, we have discussed about semaphores and we have solved previous gate model questions from these topics also. Today, we will discuss some more questions of semaphores. Then we switch to disk functionality. Okay. Once we finish uh, semaphores questions, then we will discuss this disk functionality concept. Okay, guys. So before we get into the session, please mark your presence. So I can see Avinash, Girish, Prem Ranjan, Adarsh, Monica. Good evening all. Welcome you all again. Right. <clears throat> Guys, before I start the session, as you all know, all the world is worried about this coronavirus and the preventive measure is to wash your hands frequently and this is the way you have to wash your hands once you wet your hands then apply the soap then rub your hands palm to palm then back off your hands then in between the fingers okay and rub the backs on fingers opposing palms like this then clean the thumbs also. Okay. Then wash finger nails like this. Then rinse your hands and dry with a single use towel or tissue paper and use another single use towel or tissue paper to uh, clean the tap. So this is the way you have to wash your hands. So please do practice it and implement it. Okay. And for any assistance with respect to Corona, please reach on this number 9111-239-78046. This is the toll-free number. GradeUp will be always with you in tough situations like this. Prep smart, stay safe. Thank you, guys. So let's get into the session. Today's session, today we will be discussing, continuing the semaphores concept with questions and then we will switch to disk functionality and here is brief about me this is Satya Narayana with 13 plus years of experience and I have mentored more than 10,000 students I am qualified in GATE, SET and certified by Cisco and I am a PhD scholar too. So let's get into the session guys. So as a continuation to yesterday's concept that is semaphores this is the next question on semaphores what is the question please go through the question once the following program consists of three concurrent processes and three binary semaphores and they are initialized as s0 equal to 1 s1 equal to 0 s2 equal to 0 okay so S0 is equal to 1, S1 is equal to 0, and S2 is equal to 0. Now, the question is, how many times will the process P0 print 0? Here you have options at least twice, exactly twice, exactly thrice, exactly once. Guys, what's your answer for this question? 
ओके आई कैन सी हर्षिल श्रीदीप चेतन प्रतीक प्रतीक अगेन हियर गुड गुड टू सी यू अगेन इन दिस सेशन आल्सो सो गुड इवनिंग ऑल यू yeah so here it is initialized s not is 1 s1 is equal to 0 and s2 is equal to 0 now yesterday we have discussed when it is a binary semaphore weight operation is possible on what semaphore which has 1 so weight of s not is possible so p not will execute first this will be executed first then what happens after weight of s0 enters into critical section so it print zero so here i am writing the output it print zero then release s1 s1 value becomes 0 to 1 so now who got a chance weight of s1 then what s1 will do again release s0 so weight of s0 made 1 to 0 now release of s0 will make 0 to 1 again so weight of s0 print 0 now assume assume <coughs> after weight of s0 release of s1 happened release of s2 happened now i am assuming release of s1 happened means again again s1 value became 0 to 1 initially it was 0 release of s1 made it 1 weight of s1 made it 0 again now again release of s1 made it 1 now release of s2 it made to 1 now p2 is executing weight of s2 again it will become 0 weight of s2 here weight means decrement release means like signal increment release of s0 so s0 again becomes 1 because it is already executed weight of s0 again so it again print 0 like this how many times it keeps printing at least twice at least twice because once p not executed first then either p1 or p2 execute next that will release p not again so minimum two times it gets executed means print of zero gets executed minimum two times right yeah you can understand any order like p not p1 p not p2 p not p1 p0 p1 p0 p2 so any order you can assume like this so minimum p0 will get executed twice so zero will be printed at least twice so at least twice would be your answer got it so pratik soni is giving all uh, comments yes yes exactly mahesh hi exact right right so i hope everyone understood this and then next question semaphores are used to solve the problem of race condition process synchronization mutual exclusion none so we have to choose why we reuse semaphores guys now it's your turn what is your answer i am waiting for all your answers guys so all the students please give your give your responses involve in the session make the session very very interactive so what is your answer for this question guys semaphores are used to solve the problem of what avinash was telling all but there is like c option right 
अविनाश यू यू वांट टू यू वांटेड टू टेल ऑप्शन सी ओके हर्षिल टू एंड थ्री ओके व्हाट अबाउट अदर्स स्टूडेंट्स एवरीवन आई वांट रेस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम एवरीवन श्रीदीप ऑल पालक वाज टेलिंग टू एंड थ्री साई सी Rana was telling only one, but there is no option like only one. I mean, yeah, okay, one and two. Right, right, good, <clears throat> good to see all your responses, guys. Let's see, guys. We know that race condition is a problem. To solve this race condition, we have got the solution as what? critical section so semaphores is not the problem for race condition not the solution for race condition so it is wrong yes semaphores is solution for mutual exclusion what is this mutual exclusion only one process in critical section yes we can do that with binary semaphore so semaphore is used for that and synchronization yes when one process execute in sync with another process like in understanding with another process when a process understand that other process is in critical section then it will gets blocked or wait until it release so semaphore is used to solve the problem of both process synchronization and mutual exclusion but not race condition directly so 2 and 3 option b you should be your answer okay right right so these are what different problems that we have got from semaphores guys okay so keep practicing these semaphores these are very very important semaphores is very very important concept and ipc is also inter process communication means that critical section problem is also very very important so keep keep practicing these ipc problems and semaphores problems guys okay so let's get into the other topic that is disk functionality so what is a disk basically whenever we say disk immediately everyone get hard disk or cd into picture into your mind right so to understand what is this disk and how it works before that we should understand how a computer memory is basically classified into how your computer memory is basically classified into let's see the memory is basically classified into two types guys internal memory this i already told while i discussed uh, the cvo concept secondary memory concept i already discussed as many people might have missed it i'll just brief it again memory is basically classified into these two internal external under internal we will get registers and cache <clears throat> yeah one second guys you can do it from outside and then external memory which is classified into four types they are primary secondary cache again and flash memory now under primary we have ram and rom 
volatile non volatile now our concept is secondary memory because the disks come under secondary so this is the basic classification of memory guys okay now whenever we see this secondary memory yeah it's already there of course uh, let me erase it <clears throat> this is secondary memory why it is called secondary memory because for cpu access the data whenever the cpu want the data so cpu always give later priority later priority to this memory so this is called secondary for that reason and what is the other name for this secondary memory it is also known as what auxiliary storage or backup storage that means excessive than required safe copy so auxiliary or backup means give this mail auxiliary means excessive backup means safe copy now this is secondary memory is again sub classified into two types as sequentially accessible memory sequentially accessible devices and randomly accessible devices sequentially accessible and randomly accessible sequentially accessible devices are what we call as magnetic tapes the best example is audio cassette the best example that you can take for magnetic tapes is audio cassette which are accessed in some order only and randomly accessible these are what we also call as disks and there are three types of disks basically floppy disk optical disk under which we get this cd dvd and blu ray disk and magnetic disk floppy disk optical disk magnetic disk this magnetic disk is what we call as hard disk and currently we will throw light on this so we will focus much on this magnetic disk guys okay so let us try to understand about this magnetic disk okay before i <coughs> start discussing about this magnetic disk guys please do like the session share it to all your friends who are aiming for gate and let them also benefit out of it and do subscribe to our grade up gate channel so that you will get all the notifications with the bell icon okay so right now everybody please do like the session guys if you really like it of course okay yes yes abhinash Avinash, we discussed it already in the COA, but when I want to discuss about the scheduling concept, disk scheduling, I require that I need to use the term cylinder. So whenever I should use the term cylinder, definitely you should 
have understanding about this what is that so as uh, some students might be new for this session might have joined late they have they might have missed the coa lectures so that, that's why i am taking some time to explain what this is okay those who already listened to it take it as a revision nothing goes waste guys don't feel as boring just try to recall how much you remember try to analyze yourself okay so i'll wait for a couple of minutes if you have any doubts guys you may ask now Okay. महेश मैंने ट्राई किया ये वेबसाइट पे नहीं दिख रहा ओके इज इट सो महेश यू ट्राई चेकिंग वंस अगेन अंडर स्टार्टअप अंडर स्टार्टअप ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन यू विल फाइंड दिस सी वो ये लेक्चर्स there you will find all this you try once however i will also inform my technical team to follow up this okay fine fine <clears throat> right so guys uh, when we discuss this magnetic disk which is also hard disk externally hard disk looks like this with a rectangular shape inside the hard disk we will have the circular plate these are what we call as uh, platters we will have minimum two platters two some n platters that n depends on the disk capacity but no hard disk will have a single platter okay and each platter will have two recording surfaces two recording surfaces each platter will have one is top another is bottom on both sides every platter can be recorded so all these platters are mounted on a central location that is what we call as spindle that central location where all platters are mounted one over the other that is called spindle and each surface is partitioned into concentric circles you can see this these are what we call as tracks and each track is further partitioned into these circles these are what i can say as sectors and remember the universal capacity of one sector is 5 12 bytes like how pi is equal to 22 by 7 3.14 one sector size is also universal constant okay now to access this to access this uh, hard disk here we will have an arrangement like this this is what we call as read write axis here if you observe one end of axis is fixed here to the other end to the other end Uh, let me try to use a different color for you so that yeah to the other end here we will have read write head so this read write head will record the data or scan the data this read write head will either 
write or read here recording means writing scanning means reading okay now <coughs> to operate all these spindle and these axis head and all here we will have a logical circuit that is what we call as read write logic or controller here we will have read write logic or controller so this is what the inner structure of uh, the inner structure of magnetic disk still we did not discuss how it work okay then you can understand even more better with this example i believe so these are the platters and this is the spindle guys so this is what the central location this is what we call as spindle and this is the read write axis here you can see this at one end here what we have is read write head okay now under spindle when this is the spindle when platters are mounted one over the other one over the other please observe here guys suppose this is the surface of one platter now the read write axis is like this if you observe at any given time without any movement of the read write axis exactly half track can be accessed by this read write head without any movement but the question is what if the data is here the sectors that we want are if the sectors are in the other half what to do then definitely what happens the disk the splatter should rotate for this rotation as all the platters are mounted towards the spindle under the spindle here you will have a motor called spindle motor this is what we call as spindle motor so when the spindle motor rotates spindle gets rotated when the spindle gets rotated these platters start rotate okay now right right so it's good to see that all are all are following the lecture good now what is this cylinder means so as i just said assume that this is the spindle this is the spindle okay and there are let there are two platters that means four surfaces we have let us say this is the first surface this is the second surface this is the third surface and this is the fourth surface so as we know the numbering starts with zero so this is surface zero surface 1 surface 2 surface 
now how the data gets read or written means first all first tracks will be finished first all first tracks will be finished like let me uh, mark here so first the data gets recorded in this first track once that track is full then the data gets recorded on the first track of next surface then the data gets recorded on the first track of next surface then on next surface so one one track from every surface this is what one one track execute so one one track from every surface so this collection of all these first tracks this is what we call as the collection of all these first tracks is what we call as cylinder <coughs> similarly once this cylinder is finished then then next cylinder start filling so let me present that cylinder here so when the first cylinder gets filled now the data gets started storing in these sectors next sectors these one so which are marked blue so the collection of all these second tracks all these second tracks this is also called as cylinder so this is first cylinder 0 this is second cylinder 1 so here basically what is a cylinder collection of guys make a note of it what is a cylinder means collection of one track sectors from each surface collection of one track sectors from each surface is called cylinder right so here you can understand it even more better so this is the spindle guys this is the spindle on which platters are mounted so all first tracks so this one this collection is one cylinder and all second tracks this collection is another cylinder all third tracks this collection is another cylinder so here one one track how many tracks will be there in one cylinder per surface so one cylinder will get one track from each surface isn't it so can i say number of cylinders is equal to what what i can say guys respond number of cylinders is equal to what i am waiting for all your response what i can say number of cylinders is equal to what number of tracks exactly exactly so number of tracks per surface so number of cylinders is equal to number of tracks per surface please underline this and mark it as important put a star 
and what is the other important point we have discussed one sector size is equal to 512 bytes 512 bytes and if there are anybody who are preparing for competitive other competitive exams like nilet like i know pratik you are preparing for this so like this if any one are there who are preparing for other competitive exams also like for nilet for them this kind of uh, formula will be very very important okay fine <clears throat> so now when we understood all this what is the time the total time to access here what is the meaning of access here access means either you may get the sector or you may put the sector data anything is called access so the total time required to access a sector from disk is called access time access time now now <clears throat> this time let it be t the total time let it be t so this t will be equal to it's not a single unit it is combination of several time units what are they what different times are involved in it first you should spend some time to reach the track u means here read write head to should reach the track from which is from which i mean from which sector you wanted to read or write that sector will be in some track first our head should reach that track then then your head should reach that particular sector in the track because one track will have many sectors currently the head may be at uh, 20th sector but you want let us say 67th sector so the head should move again again here head will not move for sector reaching what happens disk moves disk will rotate isn't it so for the for reaching the sector what is required rotation is required then the time to copy the data in or out some time may be required and for managing all these some overhead like i can say read write logic type read write logic type. so the total time is combination of all these right now what we call this time to reach the corresponding track as guys i am expecting answer from you now what do you call the time to reach the track as what this time is called this time is called what yeah tech master is giving all the formula very good seek time what this time we call as seek time let me put it as t suffix yes exactly exactly good and the time to reach this sector which is possible by disk rotation so we call this as rotational latency rotational latency let me put this as t suffix r and the time to copy the data in or out is called transfer time 
so let me put this as a t suffix t and this a read write logic time we call as controllers overhead so this we call as t suffix c so here we got the total time to access any sector is combination of seek time plus average rotational latency plus transfer time plus controllers overhead controllers overhead in this this controllers overhead may be neglected this controllers overhead may be neglected and and i just said whenever a disk whenever the axis placed on the surface at any given time half half track it can scan half track it can scan right so if the data is on the other half if the data is on this other half how much rotation is required half rotation is required so what is average rotational latency we can say here so tr is equal to half rotation time half rotation time the average rotational latency will be half rotation time right yeah so today we try to understand what what are different types of memory and what is the different what are different types of secondary memory and then we try to understand how hard disk works and then what is access time so today we tried understanding these four parameters guys right and here one more point i can add that is if you observe here we are having the read write head axis and read write head so how many read write heads we will have how many read write heads we will have means i'll present that here suppose if this is the spindle this is your uh, surface zero surface one surface two surface three that means these two belongs to same platter first platter platter zero so this is the top surface of the platter this is the bottom surface of the platter right this is the first platter similarly these two belong to the next platter so next platter's so top surface next platter's bottom surface so this is first platter's top first platter's bottom right now the point is we know the first platter's top is having the read write axis along with read write head so now the now the question is 
what if the data is what if the data is on this here or on the second platter or on the last platter's last surface so what if the data is somewhere here this definitely this axis can't come here right not possible so every surface will have a dedicated read write axis with read write head so not only the top surface every surface that means if there are 10 surfaces 10 surfaces will have their dedicated read write axis and read write heads understand so the number of read write heads will be equal to number of what surfaces okay and then one more point here i would like to add generally when you say this is one surface we know these are divided into tracks we know this is the innermost track so this is innermost track and this is outermost track right it is common perception that it will have less number of sectors it will have more number of sectors because it is a small circle so small area so we might understand like small small area so less number of sectors it's a big one this one is big one so outer outer sector is big one so more sectors outer track is big one so we may put more sectors this is very common perception but this is wrong this is wrong every track will have equal number of sectors each track has same number of sectors how that is possible yes that is possible with density so we will have more density for the innermost track less density for the outermost track so if you keep four sectors four sectors in the innermost even the in the outermost track also you will keep four sectors only so here what you observe the sector gap the sector gap gapping between sectors varies but the number of sectors will not vary so remember each track has same number of sectors so guys you can put all these things in one point that is that is what each platter has equal number of surfaces that is two surfaces each surface will have 
same number of tracks and each track will have equal number of sectors and each sector will have equal number of bytes how many 512 bytes 512 bytes okay and what is the time to access that is combination of seek time which is time to reach the track once you reach the track once you reach the track you should reach the sector that is average latency then you should transfer the data in or out of the disk and to do all these controller read write logic also may require some time so the summation of all this is what we call as tran uh, access time in this controller's time may be neglected got it so that's it guys for today before i sign off on uh, green card offer is going on which will be very very useful for you guys to do your practice we'll give daily quiz mock test will be there so to get all access to mock test you have to you need to have this green card and currently on green card you can save 100 rupees so hurry up and get this okay i recommend all aspirants to get this green card access so that's all for today guys we will see about this uh, application today we discussed only theory part i know you people were waiting for gate questions so as you now know what is a cylinder today tomorrow we will be discussing the application of it that is what disk scheduling disk scheduling tomorrow we will try to discuss this with the gate questions okay with gate questions so that's all for today guys so before i sign off again don't be panic about corona take preventive measures avoid going outside or however lockdown is uh, going on in our, our country still try to avoid going out until unless if it is utterly required try avoid going to crowded places keep uh, wash your hands uh, at regular intervals of time don't touch your face with your hands okay regularly so just by following these preventive measures definitely we can fight with corona don't be panic guys and don't panic others also so stay safe at home stay healthy stay tuned to grade up just go on with grade up you uh, this this kind of uh, 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 hurdles should not stop your gate preparation so just keep preparing with grade up guys grade up will be always there with you so signing off for today this is satya until then tomorrow we'll meet guys until then prep smart score better go grade up thank you